We are back with Dr. Neva. Dr. Neva, one of the things that you 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 want to emphasize uh, to speak on is the impact of culture on diversity and global businesses. Tell us a little bit about that. Um, when someone hears about how culture and diversity affect global businesses, what what comes to mind? What should come to mind? You know, one thing I realize is that people are not exposed, no matter, and it's not everyone, I should say, but there are individuals that are not exposed in the sense where they don't know how to approach another person from another region. Example, you will negotiate differently from one region to the next. For some, simply by not receiving a phone call or not hearing from them, again, <laughs> means they're not interested. They don't say, I'm not interested. They just cease all communication. There are others who make the decision before they meet you if they're going to do business or not. But they keep you on the, just hanging there. And there are others who are constantly inviting you out constant because they're trying to learn who you are and they're studying you. So you're on the end, oh, they're very nice, they're very kind. Yes, they're fattening you with food, giving you a lot, taking you out, giving you all the drinks. But in the meantime, they are studying you to see if they're going to close the deal or not. Right. These are things you need to understand. Again, different culture. Some cultures, you could shake their hands. Mm -hmm. Some cultures, you cannot. Some culture, depending on if you're a woman, you have to cover. And, if, you know, again, that's not all. And I say culture because it may fall on the religion for some. Others, it may be cultural where they have to be covered as a woman. Uh, there are other cultures just by how you sit can show how you feel or you might be insulting the person. How you give, give us an example. I don't know if you know if you show your foot bottom in the Asian culture that's a form of insult. And I remember someone speaking to me before and not looking at me and at first i was just look at me i'm talking because you know eye contact well for them that's an insult eye contact yes yes and they look down because it's a sign of respect for who you are so you have to be careful of all these things and know the culture to, you know, do that or not to do that. No, I found out, and I'm, I'm not, honestly, I'm not sure if it's, you know, in other parts of the Middle East or Africa or North Africa, but I found out in Jordan, yes, we say yes. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. This is yes. Really? Yes. <laughs> so, and no. So, no is a nod. Yes. And yes is shake. Wow. Yeah. This is yes. Yes. <laughs> this is, so, you got to be careful of stuff like that. And, and <laughs> well, culture is different, but you need to understand, and this is something that. I've learned. You may go into a home and a lot of these cultures, they love to feed you, you know. Now the weirdest thing that happened to me in Saudi with the family, and this is my first time when I visit, this was not, they were not a Saudi family, okay. They were a Jordanian and Lebanese couple and they spread a plastic on the ground and threw the food on the plastic and I sat there 
<laughs> Am I supposed to eat that? <laughs> and they go, they looked at me when I looked, I was like, and they looked and they said, oh, you're used to a plate. But in my head, we're still on the ground yeah, right. eating off this plastic. But that's the way they break bread. That's the way they show their affection. And yes, that's what I did. I ate off the ground, off that plastic. And they assured me it was very clean, so I had nothing to worry about. Kudos to you. <laughs> you know, recently in the news, there's been a lot, well, Nobody can escape it. A lot of talk about um, the, um, immigration, mm -hmm. immigration challenges, immigration situation. How much of an impact does that have on your business, your particular area? It has an impact in a sense where individuals from the other side, meaning from, say, Africa or Middle East, they don't. They're not in tune or excited about coming to the United States at the moment. One. Two, there are individuals that are fearful to leave, to expand, if they have a green card. Now, understand it says the rule is, or the clarification that individuals with the green card are not affected, but however, some are still scared, and so that has its impact. Of course, there's some that doesn't matter because they want to expand, they love business, and they want to move further into whatever they're doing. So that doesn't impact. But on the other side, especially, coming to the United States, they're not as excited as they used to be at this moment. Give us one memorable uh, situation as a global business development coach? One memorable situation. Well, <laughs> well, there was someone that wanted to start real estate before, in Nigeria specifically. And what makes it memorable? And to me, still memorable. I don't know if this is an exciting story or not, but they basically, for the past five years, is just an idea. They went without me because they thought they can do it without me. They bought land and then found out the land belongs to someone else. after they bought it. So that apartment building that they were trying to build is just sitting there because they've been busy trying to sort out land issue. And, you know, this can happen anywhere, but at the, I mean, in develop, the developing countries. However, it doesn't, it's not difficult to just take the proper precaution, especially you're going you're planning planning to build real estate you understand you're spending a lot of money and you're building this complex to only find out you're going back and forth in court what do you think they avoided you or tried to circumvent you money yes mm -hmm. but now they're in court so <laughs> you know it's for me, it's just having my contacts, my network, making sure everything is okay, doing the paperwork, the proper legwork to make sure everything was fine from the get-go. Which is one of the most, um, or some of the most, some some of the very challenging countries you've had to do business with. Well, Kenya. Kenya. Yes, but again, it depends on what you're doing because. It might be challenging for a school to come there, but not challenging for a finance company because the rules and regulation is different. Mm -hmm. You understand? So even with, you know, I would say the Middle East, 
depending on what you want to do, may be difficult because in some parts of the Middle East, they require that you can't just come in by yourself. You need a business partner. And the business partner has to be one of their people, a citizen of that country. Now, and this is normal. Yes. For some of these countries. Yes. For you to set up business, you have to be a partner with a citizen of the country. Yes. I'm so glad I'm here in this. <laughs> I, you have no idea how I am happy to hear this. Well, be, you know, because in the Caribbean, you know, Guyana has just found a whole bunch of oil, and you know, there's this this discussion about people going into Guyana to purchase land, and you know, now the guy is about to turn around, and there's this debate about should they be able to just go and own land, or would they have to partner with Guyanese and so on. So I'm so glad to hear that there are countries around the world. Yes. You know, as a country, you need to be protective of your own. If you're going to lose your resources, mm -hmm. you know, just anyone coming in, just buying and, you know, taking away from you and your people. So on one side, it might be frustrating someone just going in the country, just wanting to set up. But on the other side, you have to understand the, co um, the country put things in place that they can preserve. You know, that their people can actually make money as that well. Sense. That makes sense to me. And there are certain countries that will say, you know what, you need to hire our people. So you can come in and set up a certain business by yourself, but the restriction, you need to hire our people. Your book, Understanding, Female's Guide to Understanding Leadership. Who would you want? It's kind of a silly question because females guide to understanding leadership. <laughs> what, Wait. Why did you write this book? I mean, what, what inspired it? The Middle East. The Middle East? The Middle East inspired it. I taught leadership to female students there. Uh -huh. And I recall my first class where I walked in and I said, okay, name a leader. And they mentioned from King Abdullah, or they mention, you know, everyone, everything that came out of their mouth was male. And when I looked, like, okay, any other leaders? And they go, oh, Martin Luther King. And I, although I'm happy to hear that, or they say Malcolm X, or, you know, Michael Jordan. Yeah. But I was, I did not hear any female names. Why is this important? And, and I'm asking this question more so for young listeners tuning into this. Why is it so important for women, especially young women, to not only identify female leaders, mm -hmm. but know within themselves that they are capable of such and, and, and they should strive to be leaders themselves? Why is that so important? I believe you need role models. Mm -hmm. And you really need role models that are similar to you or someone you can look up to. Now, I'm not saying that you can't look up to a male, because one of my role models is actually my grandfather. Mm. However, someone that's similar, the struggles, can understand you, or not understand you, but you have that similar path. Example, you want to be a doctor. How about looking at a female medical doctor that maybe from your region that went through the same challenges or course whatever maybe no challenges but the same path as yourself I believe that empowers you to see well she did it so why can't I you know that motivation from another female it to me is uplifting what is a typical day in the life of Dr. Nathan? <laughs> well, a typical day, it's hard for me to even sleep because I'm always wondering about the next day. I can't wait the next day. What's going to happen? My phone is like next to me always checking, seeing what's going on, following up. If I travel, you know, always 
off <laughs> not always um, in one location you know flying to another country another region just always busy and if I happen to not be busy I'm concerned because something is wrong you know so it's always speaking to people always networking always trying to find the right channel especially doing business globally trying to make sure I have the right contacts at my resource so that people you know are ready that I got it to take them to the next level this 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 is actually very good for your clients to hear that you're so much on top of things and you're always mm -hmm. looking to um, make the right connections and so on in, in your particular field um, how very important it is to not only develop relationships but know how to maintain solid relationships you know what as a business owner regardless you need connection and people say it's not about what you know is who um, who you know I like to take it a step further and say it's not about who you know is it's not about who you know but who knows you and constantly being in front of individuals I'm give you a story in 2008 2007 2008 as living in Georgia before then I came back to New York and I started the Caribbean Business Network and I was very active and it was growing and a lot of people knew who I was and it was just getting bigger and bigger I did it basically in Queens did a few events in Brooklyn but particularly I focused on Queens left to go to the Middle East I did quite some traveling then the Middle East and then Florida set up a business in Jamaica came back to Florida came to New York and I'm starting in a sense feel like I'm starting over to build the connections again because the network it sent self was like in the past now good for me I still know people but some of those people have fell off the track of knowing me from Caribbean Business Network. So so maintaining connections, maintaining, communication, these are very important. Very important. And it's not, you know, some of us just like to have people come to our circle only. You also need to go to other people's circles. And I've learned that as well. You know, one point it was like, okay, they're coming to me. Now it's me going to them. And what are some benefits? People get to know each other from connection. I mean, I know you because of a connection yeah. and so forth. And we continue building each other from there. You know, we need to keep that. It's not about, oh, connection is just going to build me. No, us. You know, it's always how you're going to help me, but at the same time, how can I help you? Yes, yes. It's a two-way. As a global business developer, um, what are some things you have learned about yourself over the past, let's say, five years? I would love to mention all the good stuff, but I like <laughs> to keep it real. <laughs> I panic. I like to see success right away. I don't, I like perfection. I don't like the bad to be exposed, but you know, it's a part of life and it's, you know, constantly reminding myself it's life and just live, you know. But yeah, that's, I'm not perfect by a long shot. I work hard. Yes. When have you been most satisfied in life? Most satisfied whenever I make an, an accomplishment. 
and that accomplishment can be from business or making someone happy or motivated. Well, for our Caribbean brethren listening to this show, or whenever they do, what is one thing you can share with them about the power, about the benefit rather, of networking among themselves, and, or just networking? What is one thing you can share? The power of networking, you never know where it's going to take you. Yeah. It's so important. Simple. Now, I know you said specifically the Caribbean, you know, individuals that are listening in, but through someone seeing me, hey, how are you doing? I start speaking. Didn't realize who the person was. Now, the person that I met is one of the most powerful persons in Nigeria. And I met him in Florida just walking around. Through networking, just being who I am in a sense where not carrying a, a title around or stuffy is just, hey, you know, introduce me to others. And those others have brought me to other powerful individuals. And not just from, you know, Nigeria. This happens a lot. Hence the reason why I, why I do what I do. But you need, when we tend to be selfish in a way where, oh, I'm not saying, I'm not going to share this because they're going to take it and they're going to make themselves better. Sometimes your kindness to help others can bring you so much more. I, I, I actually really truly believe in that. Um, just now you, you alluded to being impatient with business and you just want, want things to happen. <laughs> um, you know, you don't want to highlight the bad. But I, I'm going to expand this a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. I, I'm just in one of the Skyda modes. Um, aside from that, what, <laughs> what, is, what would you consider a weakness, a business weakness? Well, uh, a business weakness, I would say, for myself, is Well, wouldn't that also be a weakness? A weakness, go ahead. <laughs> a weakness. Plain and simple. A weakness. All right. So a weakness, I will say, is sometimes just wanting to do things by myself and not being able to delegate properly. Now, as a leader, you're supposed to know how to do that. But at times, you're such a perfectionist. <laughs> you you just focus in on I, I'll do this, I'll do this. And there are other people like we, we can help, but you're not hearing them. Yeah. Yeah. When are you most happy? Traveling. Traveling? Yes. If you were to go to your favorite place mm -hmm. with your favorite book or thing to read, <laughs> favorite music, favorite drink, mm -hmm. where will this place be? What would you be drinking? What music will you be listening to? Well, what will you be reading? Wow. Okay. So, I have an eclectic taste. Ooh. So, I'll be listening to, you know, a little um, different kind of music from Sub-Sahara Africa or yeah. reggae or calypso or souls. And maybe pop. I am <laughs> eclectic. As for what I'll be drinking, probably water or yeah. coconut water. Coconut, okay. Coconut water. Welcome to the club. <laughs> coconut water. And uh, where will I visit? Hmm. 
I have been to different places and uh, well the coconut water probably the Caribbean but I would also I went to Spain once and I really enjoyed Spain there's something about it that I like but and what book will I read Ooh. and I want to read your book <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes. <laughs> yes, I glanced at his book and it's it's eye opening, really has some touching words in there. So is it the earth heart knows? No, you got it. The earth heart yes. knows. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for that. <laughs> what are you most thankful for? I'm thankful for family. Mm. If you could go back in time. What would you tell that 15 year old girl? I will tell that 15 year old girl it would be okay. You're going to make it. You're still on it. I mean, you're on a journey. You're going to make it. But those days when you don't feel like getting up to do what you need to do, who or what? gets you out of that mindset? Wow. The days, of course there have been those days where I don't want to, you know, but I guess individuals in my past, I mentioned before my grandpa, mm -hmm. just the words that he has said to me, you know, the things, I mean he passed on years, years ago, but um, just seeing how my mom pushes a lot to make things happen. Just flying to all over the world to make things happen. My dad, who is very spiritual and just speaks life into me, you know. So when those days that get me down and realizing that if I don't get up, I'll lose their smile. Mm, parents, I like that. Repeat know. that. If I don't reduce you such. If I, don't, <laughs> if I get, don't get up, I'll lose their smiles. And I, I don't want that at that all. That's so profound. If I don't get up, I'll lose their smiles. If you if your parents mm -hmm. were sitting in front of you right now, this moment, what is one thing you will tell your dad and then your mom? Or vice versa. Okay, so to dad, I will say, I love you, even though you were not rich, you are a very humble man. I love you because you so much have, you're faithful to your belief, and you're a loving person, no matter what. To my mom, I will say, you're one of the strongest women that I know and sometimes I don't know how to show you because I think you don't need to hear but I realize you really do need to hear it that you're a survivor beyond the survivors you came from nothing and look at you now and to both my parents I love you so much and thanks for giving me life what makes you love out loud? What makes me laugh out loud? Well, what makes me laugh out loud? Oh, wow, that's that. Um, sometimes, I, you know, in a crazy way, things that are disorganized uh -huh. can make me laugh out loud. Or you know, because after the chaos and after the storm, you know, just laughing, looking back. Um, that's one. Um, laugh out loud. I would love to see a good comedy show, but I'm not even, you, you know. I... <laughs> <laughs> no one caught you, right? Yes. <laughs> oh, well, some people believe I laugh a lot. Some people believe I'm too serious. So I don't know. Well, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for spending this time with us this evening. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate You're it. You're welcome. And to our listeners, 
Fear not what fear whispers to you, fear your obedience to it. Thank you and good night.